Who knew that California forests are just filled with quail? Sometimes seeing the bird you're looking for comes down more to luck than it does to skill. Furthermore, there are some species that are simply difficult to find, even if you do everything right. This was the case when we went to the Sequoia National Forest in California, hoping to locate a species that was on the top of our list of birds to find. So we're in a pretty remote area and we're looking for the northern pygmy owl. So it's going to be like a mile and a half hike in, stream crossing involved different habitat than we've been in. So hopefully we'll find some other species too, but I'm really hoping for the northern pygmy owl. There's a storm rolling in, so it's gonna be a bit of a race against time. Joining us were our two friends, Rick and Rachel, who is a professional bird guide. Aided by these two extremely knowledgeable birders, we were hopeful we would be able to find our target species, especially with Rick as our hype man. Rick, give us a, a pep talk. You guys? This is what separates the uh, passive birds from the real ones. You guys, we got this. We're gonna do this if we need to. We'll roll a log in front and we'll climb over it. Whatever we gotta do, we're gonna do this and we're gonna be there. Ordinarily, we would be able to drive the road leading to the best spot for the pygmy owls. However, with heavy precipitation earlier in the year, we had some obstacles in our way. So one of the stories of the trip so far has actually been the washout. So they had a lot of water coming through that took out a lot of the roads. So a lot of the areas we would originally visit have been closed. So I had to do some unorthodox things to kind of get around that. But you can definitely see what it's like behind us. One of our biggest hurdles was an area where the entire road had been washed away, leaving us with two options, either wade through the water or climb across a log that happened to bridge the gap. No driving on that. Fearlessly approaching the site. You didn't want to do one for the blooper reel? <laughs> Maybe on the way back. When we were first headed up to the road, many bird species were out and singing. It seemed like as the clouds rolled in, the birds started to take cover. Eventually, we did get some brief views of a western warbler species. Just had a McGillivray's warbler. Uh, sat up for a second, but then left. I think maybe it's still flying around back there, but we'll see if we can get a better view, but got something ideable at least. Throughout our walk, we heard the calls of a bird we really wanted to see, the mountain quail. However, much like pygmy owls, this particular species is extremely difficult to get an actual view of. We did, however, get some good looks at a different quail species. Just got actual looks at two California quail. They flushed from the undergrowth, and then we actually got looks at them as they sat on the log, which is cool. And there have been a lot of birds in here so far. Not many have been cooperative, but we're going to keep trying to get looks at the ones we're hearing and hopefully pick out that pygmy owl. With the pygmy owls refusing to make an appearance, we turned our attention to locating one of the mountain quails that were making noise off the trail. We got excited when we saw a raptor species chasing something in the brush. Based on what I saw, the coloration and overall size and proportions, probably sharp shinned, could be coopers, but I don't like they had sharp shinned. But yeah, it was diving in there um, after the, the, the mountain quail, or presumably after the mountain quail, and they started making a ruckus over it. So hopefully we'll get to see something. Neither the raptor or the bird it was chasing ever revealed themselves. So we decided to press on. While we walked, we could see the full force of the water rushing down the road, represented by the deep ruts cutting into the path. Along the way, we tallied other species, including western tanagers, American robins, and an extremely beautiful black-headed grosbeak. As we were looking at the grosbeak, Rachel honed in on a mountain quail calling not too far off the trail. We quietly waited, hoping to get a view of this elusive species. So Rachel may have been pointed the place where the mountain quail are, but we're all just kind of waiting to see if they'll make themselves known again because right now they're not vocalizing and they're not moving at all so we're just kind of staring into the woods hoping that they come out so we're all kind of in different places 
Jesus. Very secretive bird, it seems. After waiting and watching, it was Rick that actually spotted the mountain quail quite a distance away, perched up and vocalizing, giving us a great experience with this difficult to find species. Mountain quail. Awesome. That's a killer one. That's definitely the favorite bird that I've seen so far in California is a mountain quail. Mountain quail is awesome. Love that color on the throat. It sat on that log for a long time and now it just flew down and it is calling again. So, what a great bird. Yeah. Who knew that California forests are just filled with quail? We searched a little longer, still hoping to find a northern pygmy owl. But as the sun started to get lower in the sky, we headed back. Unfortunately, we were not able to find a northern pygmy owl today, which was one of our target species. But we did get the mountain quail, which was really cool. And this was a really neat walk and trip to take in general. So I'm glad that we went out here. Maybe at some point we'll find a northern pygmy owl, but for now, it's a bird that we cannot add to our list and will remain elusive for us. We got in the car and trekked out of the wilderness, but before getting too far, we had one more amazing sighting to experience. Bobcat came across the road, flushed a mountain quail up, it's just sitting there right for us. Second epic mountain quail view. The largest quail species in the United States, mountain quails have brown wings, a mostly gray body, chestnut on the flanks and chin, and white striping on the sides. Mountain quails can often be heard, but rarely seen. Their haunting single note calls echo throughout the mountains and can be heard even a long distance away. These birds are native to the westernmost states of the US, as well as Idaho, Nevada, and Baja, California. Mountain quails eat both plant matter such as nuts and berries, as well as animals such as insects and other small invertebrates. We felt extremely lucky to have two amazing experiences with this species, as they can be notoriously hard to actually see. Mountain quail. That's awesome. You want to see the... Oh, that's awesome. Fantastic place. That is so cool. Nice. That is excellent content. It's a good day. On our way out of the forest, we also spotted a few more California quails before it got too dark to see. We enjoyed our time traversing the roads of the Sequoia National Forest, crossing the obstacles to see some amazing California birds. While we weren't able to find the northern pygmy owl, we did get some truly incredible sightings of mountain quails. Someday, we will have to try for the northern pygmy owl again, but until that time, it will remain a species on the top of our list to see. It's worth noting that we would have had no idea where to go if not for the fact that we had Rachel as our guide. If you'd like to book a tour with Rachel to see the birds like these, check out her website using the link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.